Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, welcome to 2020 Accelerated Robotic and AI, also known as Three Guys with an Accent. And if you don't get the joke right now, I am sure that half of way through this webinar, you will all understand why. Uh, but uh, jokes aside, I would love for my colleague to begin introducing themselves. Uh, so why don't we start with Felipe? Yes, hello everyone. Yeah, I'm very excited to be uh, here with Massimo and Archil in, in this webinar. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick introduction about our company uh, and ourselves and myself so that you can get to know a little bit more about, uh, about us. So you know, we started you know, KiwiBot in 2017 with the vision of deploying a food delivery robot network in all the major cities in the US. And you know, so far we have already made more than you know, 120,000 orders since we started. So this is already beyond the concept. The, uh, the, the, the company the company we have been focused since the beginning in uh, ensuring that we reduce the cost. So three years building the, the future of delivery. This year specifically, we started to uh, focus more on a B2B side. So instead of uh, being in the war of delivery, more like selling the weapons and making sure that everyone has the same access to a delivery network, yeah, for the ones that are not familiar with the robot, this is a video of it. It's a robot that it, it's a ground robot that goes into the sidewalk. Yeah, that normally has a range from the closer of restaurants of up to 1.5 miles. The next version is going to have three miles. And yeah, we started in Colombia yeah, with a food delivery company. My prior company was a food delivery company yeah, that I sold to a delivery hero subsidiary. Then I was in Shark Tank and we closed our first round over there. Uh, then the, Ber Ber the University of Berkeley was our first institutional investor. Uh, we have built 775 robots across five iterations since we started. Uh, we have a teleoperation uh, approach. So our robots are not fully autonomous, are semi-autonomous. And we have remote supervisors oh. that make sure that <laughs> everything is okay. Uh, uh, we have an API and a platform that is available for, for everyone. We have we already support one of like most of the major POS systems and we're going to launch all their POS systems soon. Uh, we scaled our operations in UC Berkeley. That's where we started. Uh, we achieved product market fit over there. Like uh, people dress apps as robots in Halloween. Uh, it was insane the acceptance that we had from the community over there. Uh, and then we have a, a sale the US across different states. Uh, right now we have already official key partnerships in the US like Sodexo, Shopify, Ordermark uh, that have allowed us to uh, like make us stronger our B2B site. We have our technical headquarters in Colombia in uh, Latin America. So we basically replicated the same sidewalks that we have in California and same traffic lights in our technical headquarters in Colombia. And we have been able to leverage that of, uh, from there. Uh, right now we have uh, as our four main deals, Shopify, Domino's, that is not, this is an exclusive here just for this webinar, uh, that is still of the record, Domino's, Pizza, all <coughs> over the And we have two uh, main cities that we are launching operations, San Jose and the city of Los Angeles. Uh, our top funds that have backed us, uh, Prototype Capital, Teal Ventures, Infinity Ventures, Urban US, uh, so top funds from Silicon Valley, and all the world uh, is following the realization of our vision that is creating the Internet of Atoms. And that's it. Thank you very much, Massimo, for, for, the, for the time. Thank you, Felipe, and thank you, Massimo. This will be a super interesting discussion of uh, future of technology, specifically robotics and AI. So I'll briefly talk about what we do at uh, Genesis AI. So we are building a web platform that allows companies to buy or sell artificial intelligence powered products and services. 
It's basically a website that connects companies who are interested in AI, AI products and services with companies who developed AI powered services and would like to monetize it. And what we want to build is to have a platform where potentially hundreds of thousands of AI tools communicate with each other, work together, interact, exchanging data, trading services, connecting lots of expert AI tools to potentially lay foundation for creation of artificial general intelligence, which we believe if uh, and when it will be uh, created, uh, AGI will probably be the single most valuable technology that the mankind has ever seen. So we are forefront of the our goal is to go from very, very narrow AI, which exists right now, which is AI models are only able to do very, very specific things, to more of a general AI when AI model can be, is able to do lots of different things at the same time. So um, I'll talk a little bit briefly about uh, where we are now and where we are going. Uh, so the, uh, we have, uh, uh, currently, we have a better product up and running. Uh, we have users. We increase number of users. We have by six times in the last twelve months. Uh, we are finishing up up our third round currently, seed round. We already raised around one point two million, and we'll be closing at around one point five million just in a few weeks. And uh, we are raising on net capital, so a lot to see. I'm sure I, I have some of my investors here, and a lot to see more people joining uh, this dream of shared AI to everyone, that everyone should be able to use AI products and services and monetize AI products and services. And finally, I will talk about the team. So I'm the CEO and we have other co-founders. We have known each other for over eight years now. Myself, I used to work at the largest hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater Associates. I did few startups, including one in AI space. My co-founder, David, has senior software engineering experience at Google. And my another co-founder, Mina, is just completing a PhD at Harvard and he has master's in computer engineering. So uh, a lot to talk uh, about AI and robotics, and I'm sure this will be very, very good conversation. Well, I guess it's my turn then. <laughs> Thank you, Arturo. Um, my name is Massimo De Marco. I am the CEO and co-founder of Paestro, and I am probably one of the most passionate people you'll ever find in the phone industry. I was born in Italy uh, in a seventh generation in hospitality. My mom was a tremendous chef and she made me fall in love with food, but not just with all, all food. Most importantly, I fell in love with pizza. And that is why I'm here. That is why I co-founded Paestro because I wanted to be able to bring that type of pizza that I used to make on um, on the kitchen table with my mom, that beautiful artisanal pizza with all the fresh ingredients that would just make your mouth water uh, from the very beginning. And my mom would say, stop eating the raw dough, but I would go for it anyways. Um, I wanted to bring that absolute delicious people, uh, pizza to all the people around the world that are pizza lover. Uh, and there is a lot of them. Um, you know, the, the, the business in the United States alone is uh, about $46 billion in pizza and it keep, just keeps growing. Um, so Paestro is this, is this fully automated pizzeria and, and, it, and, and it's a pizzeria in a box. You imagine a vending machine, it might look like a vending machine but it's far more than a vending machine. It's a very sophisticated piece of technology that allows us to make this delicious artisanal pizza in three minutes or less. There is this large window right in the front of the machine where a consumer can actually see the pizza being assembled. They can see the fresh ingredients falling into, onto the pie and then the pie gets pushed in the back, enters the oven, it gets cooked, cut, boxed and sent out for a completely contact experience. And so for people to be able to see their pizza being made right in front of them, it's a guarantee of freshness of ingredients and freshness of product. Um, consumers, they don't have to go over to the machine. They can actually order from their comfort of their couch. Uh, like Felipe right now sitting on his couch, he could order the pizza because I know he loves pizza. And all he can do, he has to do either, he can go on an app, 
it can go on a website or it can go to the Uber Eats, Grubhub, uh, Postmates and, and so on. And, and then receive the pizza at, at his home right now. Um, our go-to market has two prong approach. Uh, the first one, we created this Piester machine with our own set recipes. They'll be featured um, in, in, in a Piester branding machine. And, uh, um, and, and you will be able to find this machine pretty much in any convenient location. I wanna say from um, the bottom of a high rise building in New York City to a stadium, to a hospital or other big public areas like that. Um, the second one is the one that actually excites me so much because I'm having so much fun with it. It's a white label machine. So what we do is that we create this white label machine for local and regional pizza chain that they are branded to their own like it, to their own likings. And, and we work with their culinary teams so that we can recreate the recipes that they have in their own restaurants and we are able to reproduce them and make them outside, um, inside of a piester machine. Um, and then the same thing, this machine can be found in very public areas, but it's also up to the brand to decide where to place them. Um, but they're certainly designed for high food traffic. Each machine can store a minimum of 80 pizza without being refilled until the next day. And uh, we are incredibly excited because not only we closed a very successful uh, crowdfunding um, about a month and a half ago, we raised almost $1.1 million. We're about to launch a new $5 million round. Um, and I am going to stop here because I don't know if you know any Italians, but if you have any Italians, they're friends and you let them talk, they will probably get done next Tuesday. So here, I think that we already had uh, some questions that I wanted to, uh, this is a question for the entire group. Um, so Felipe, if you don't mind, uh, you can start answering this question and we'll all go through it. Um, has there been a surprising development or a shift in your technology or business approach as the pandemic hit? And if so, how and why? Yes, so you know, for, for us, it was uh, uh, like a, a trigger point in the business. Uh, so just to, you know, just like, so one part, I think that it was the cities from the city's perspective yeah, uh, before is that before the before the pandemic, like cities were yeah a little bit more slow. They were slower in accepting new technologies or in being open to install our infrastructure. After the pandemic, uh, cities realized that it was very important to have a robotic infrastructure or a delivery infrastructure in place or start developing that. Yeah, uh, for example, here in California, when the fires happened and that it was very difficult to be out there even for uh, like a, like doing deliveries for a human or like 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 for a human it was very challenging so cities are more uh, um, yeah like are more conscious about it that i think that eventually will happen but uh, definitely the pandemic accelerated that that part and that was uh, a little bit surprising for me because normally we tend to have this like in our minds that like governments like take a lot of time to do shifts and I have been very surprised that cities have uh, been very dynamic and have uh, changed things very fast in order to accept new technologies and install new technologies in their communities. Uh, that, that, that was one. I guess I'll, I'll go next. So in AI space, AI space, which has been growing super fast, had even acceleration as a result of COVID because more and more companies and people realize that technology that is a means of automation of many things can create enormous value for people, community, company, and countries even. So this realization got accelerated by COVID and we are extremely excited to be in one of the one of the most valuable and I would say hottest industry in the world as well, which is artificial intelligence. And we are targeting two sectors right now. The first sector is 
asset management, and second, which we just recently entered, is healthcare. In asset management, amount of volatility that there was, you know, we remember what happened to the prices in March and April, and then the amazing recovery that happened after. Amount of volatility that was, it was caused mainly because of COVID-related economic changes, also substantially boosted interest in what we do, this AI-powered solutions for the asset management space, because people are looking to gain edge, not only by better analyzing quantitative data, but also better analyzing most importantly text and speech data. And that's where AI comes in. AI tries to mimic the human understanding of speech and text, right? And we are working on making sure that this text and speech, which is very unstructured, hard data, will be analyzed and given to the asset managers and people, also retail investors, to make smarter financial decisions. And I'll talk more about the healthcare sector as well, which everyone knows that technology is also playing one of the biggest and biggest roles on a daily basis. So we have seen huge transformation in AI space and uh, happy to know that this, this is only accelerating. Uh, for us at Piester, we really launched during the pandemic and found that our strategy and value proposition that we've been working on for quite a while was exactly what the market was looking for at the moment. Um, with the onset of the pandemic came an increasing concern for greater health and safety measure across the restaurant industry. Um, and as you said, Archil, the, the pandemic only accelerated the ongoing shift, um, especially in the takeout and delivery model for the operators. And so in this, what's, what people call it this new normal, consumers are really spending more and more time at home and they, wanna they are turning to a quick access uh, for food options with a minimal human contact. And so that, that minimum of food contact became a must for us. So one of the things that we made sure that we added at Paestro was the ability to load the machine with the fresh ingredients, not only quickly, but also um, in a safe way that would prevent the spread of pathogens. Um, the fresh ingredients are stored in this beautiful transparent tubes that can be changed daily, exactly the same way that you would change the cartridge of your printer. So you remove the old one from the day before and you add the new one from with the fresh ingredients just by snapping it into place. Um, I think that the, the big reason that Piastro has driven investors' interest is, is really due to the uh, capability of being a standalone pizzeria model that makes this artisanal fresh pizza that is available in public spaces closer to where the consumers are, like the apartment complex lobbies and so on. I think that the one of the other things, I mean, there's a lot of other things that uh, we are working <laughs> on, but one of the things that we are considering is facial recognition. So that consumers are going to be able to order via facial recognition. So we're talking about AI in there as well. So um, those, are, those are pretty much the, um, the changes that we made to, to the machine. Um, and, and clearly, you know, um, make, striking a partnership deal with, uh, with Felipe and with uh, KiwiBot really uh, made um, and gave us another step to make sure that we had a, an absolute contactless experience from the moment that you order your food to the moment that the Kiwi bot will deliver it to the door of your house. And so since, since we talked about that, Felipe, um, you actually recently partnered with Piastro for total contact experience uh, from ordering to delivery. So how much have you seen the demand go up for autonomous last mile delivery over the last few months, right? During the pandemic, but even before that. 
So are more city interested in bringing Kiwi bot to their streets? And can you tell us where are we going to see more Kiwi bot soon? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, that just to give you a little bit of context. Yeah, uh, seven months ago, we had basically uh, just one. Yeah, uh, like we were just talking with one person, one B two B, one one B two B deal. Now we have twenty companies that are like five hundred Fortune companies that we are developing technology with. Just uh, within seven months so it was like a like a like insane uh, next the next semester yeah uh, like well normally this right now we're in a pilot stage with a, a lot of these companies some of those deployments are uh, in a stealth that, that i cannot announce in, in fully public and uh, now uh, but the next semester we're going to announce a lot of them so definitely it's a it's a, it was a trigger point to yeah, uh, to do more developments, as I mentioned, related with the cities. Uh, and I think that it was affected somehow also because of the scooters ex experience that uh, cities were more like on the on the defense when uh, other companies like approached to them to put uh, things on the sidewalks or to put things on, on, on the streets. Uh, now we have cities on waiting list, <laughs> like uh, basically uh, like no, I'm not going to say begging, but like like actually pitching us to start developing, uh, like doing robot deployments in their areas and not just in the US, but all over the world. Uh, so definitely, uh, I think that eventually this will happen. What what uh, what uh, happened was that the, the pandemic accelerated and it was more clear for everyone that these kinds of technology, uh, this technology is very important for for. Yeah, for the world about the places that I can that I that I can talk that that, that, that we're going to deploy soon. So as I mentioned in my introduction, uh, LA, the city of LA, uh, this is this is not public yet. It's going to be public in a, in, a, in a couple of weeks. We have been doing tests since October uh, here in the city. I'm actually right now in the city of LA. Uh, it's a very interesting market uh, with New York. It's, it's the top food delivery market in the US. Uh, it's an, there is an incredible uh, diversity of companies like Piestra uh, that is also uh, based here uh, that are like approaching and that are tackling the food space business. Uh, there, are other, there are other two locations that we're going to announce in, in January uh, in the US, but I don't have per, like permission to, 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 do it, to do it now. Uh, but uh, the main ones that I can talk already is uh, San Jose, the city of San Jose in California, and uh, the city of LA in California. And we also launched in October in the city of Denver in Colorado. So those are the three cities. We have a very small deployment in the city of Medellin. I'm from Colombia. And for me, it was very important to put uh, autonomous vehicles and robotics in my country. So we did the homework and, and, uh, and have, have, we have a a partnership with Rappi that is uh, like the, like a unicorn over there in, in Latin America. And we are doing deployments in the city of Medellin. So it's, it's, it's also in the map, uh, but most of our plans are uh, in the US uh, right now. Eventually this is going to work everywhere. We're going to have this in Asia, in Africa, Latin America, in the US, but we're starting where the pain is bigger that is in the, in the first world, mainly because of, of, of labor costs. Yeah, uh, I have now uh, related to to actually I think that uh, what it what excites me more about Genesis AI is uh, ensure that it, the access to AI is universal to everyone. Yes, so uh, I know that you have been so have a lot of questions, but the first question first question is I know that you are betting more right now on healthcare. So uh, I would like to know if like how. Now we're in this pandemic, how that is connected. Yeah. The second part is if like, now that we are doing these new deployments, what kind of insights are you, are you getting from, from your customers? And third, I, I would like to understand better, like what are the benefits of like the data exchange that you have in the marketplace? So first healthcare, second if findings from customers and third one, how, like I would like to understand better the exchange of data 
how what are the benefits of the exchange of data in the marketplace thank you felipe and great great question so a lot to talk more about uh, why we decided to enter the healthcare sector so uh, we believe that uh, it's our moral responsibility to win fight against COVID. We believe that we should, uh, as whole humanity, should work together to defeat this terrible, terrible virus that uh, that uh, just destroys so many things, starting from lots of people's lives to economy and so on. And we believe that technology can help greatly in this area. Technology helps in every direction, and it also helps substantially in discovering new treatment mechanism, discovering and accelerate the speed of uh, diagnostics, treatment, contact tracing, every major aspect where we need, where, where, where we think that technology can be beneficial, right? So, so we have been looking at few areas in healthcare space or COVID related. Uh, which goes from diagnostic to potential treatment and vaccines, right? And we are still in process of figuring out where we can add the biggest value. So we, our incentive and is one big reason why we entered healthcare market was mainly caused because of our moral system and beliefs. And plus there's of course is a big opportunity in terms of lots of companies being interested in using AI to accelerate uh, progress that humankind can make on defeating uh, defeating the virus. So that's one part. The second part I'll like to talk that's about uh, is uh, our um, belief in our approach towards shared AI for all, right? So, so this idea is that uh, there are all these different AI tools that are developed and operated in silos. And there is pretty much no connectivity. People are reinventing the wheel. You know, there are, pro, for example, hundreds or maybe thousands of speech recognition and natural language processing tools. And lots of people are basically doing something that already has been done. So what we want to do is to create a platform where this best expert AI products and services will work together. They will exchange data, they will communicate better. And we did lots of research that shows that when you have lots of different models interacting as a network, not only you are increasing functionality of the tool, but you are also increasing accuracy rate of these AI models. I guess a like simple example here is if you average output of multiple AI models, you actually get better results than if you relied on a single model, right? So I can talk more and more about all, about this, uh, but to summarize, uh, we believe that we should defeat all of us need to contribute in defeating the virus. And we believe the shared AI ecosystem is best way to maximize not only accuracy rate, but also functionality. So I would like to ask question to Massimo right now. And as I see uh, Piestro is, is having the two pronged approach, right? Uh, one needs, uh, and one of them directs to the consumers, right? Directly to the consumers. And the big question there is, is do you see consumer will want uh, contactless options even after the pandemic? Do you think this is sort of temporary change? Or do you think that this change will last after the pandemic and after we defeat the COVID? Um, well, hopefully we'll defeat it very soon and very quickly. Um, I want to say that during the last few months, there has been a process of habit forming. Uh, one that I believe is going to, is not going to go away after this pandemic is over. Uh, consumers are more and more concerned about who's cooking my food, who's handling my food, and who's delivering my food. So our ability to spread uh, Piestro machines all over the country and hopefully all over the world and bringing them as close as possible to the consumer, um, giving them a choice of fresh food at a touch of a button uh, with only strengthening that habit. We see automation as a, as a clear path forward and a way to ensure equality uh, and meet the concern of the public 
um, especially over the health and safety. Um, again, I'm going to go back to that contactless experience. You know, cooking is it's a big part of, of that, and we can solve that with Paestro, but so is the food journey. And that's why we have the partnership with Kiwi Bot that really sets us aside uh, from other company way early. Um, we, we, we believe 100% that in the coming months, uh, the demand for automation will continue to increase and, 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 and we're already paving this way amongst, you know, amongst our companies as a whole to have this experience, this contact like experience to become a norm. Um, if, if robotic can guarantee a higher standard of safety for people, I think that they will all stick with it. Again, I believe that these habits that have been formed, um, <clears throat> vaccine or no vaccine, the consumer have begun to enjoy this way that they get the food. And now they know the food is not just convenient, but also safer, they're not gonna go back to the old ways. Also consider this, it's not just up to the consumer right now, it's also up to the operators. The operators are really, they have their antennas up and they're doing everything they can, not just to provide a safe product, but also protect themselves from crazy lawsuits because of some infection or some contagion or something that happened in their location. So I, I, I do believe strongly that we are, you know, we're not gonna change, we're not gonna go back, just like people are not gonna rush back into very crowded, busy uh, bars as soon as the pandemic is over, right? So um, that, that, that's just my point of view. I might be wrong, but I, I'm going to stick with it. Um, so I guess at this point, we can probably open up to some q and I've seen some questions. Uh, Felipe, you want to take the first one? You can see them on, on your screen. Yes, I want to, before, before we, we, we go to, to questions, I want to, I want to give a comment on what you just said. And is that uh, I got recently because of the DoorDash IPO, there is like, you can, you can check their, uh, their video for the y, their YC demo day and also their deck for Series A. And one of the interesting parts was that uh, when they were, uh, when they put the competition as light at that time, it was Postmates, Grubhub, and DoorDash. And one of the problems of Postmates is that they didn't have like complete integration with the restaurant. Like the couriers from Postmates like went to the restaurants like and pick up. When you don't have technology in the process, you start to have a lot of, and, and we have experienced ourselves this when we did the, the, the sandbox in Berkeley. With the restaurants that we were completely, completely integrated, we had like, better pickup times and uh, like we like the, the overall ETA estimation like well, the ETA uh, setup and also the delivery time was improved. One of the interesting parts to have automation also inside of the restaurant is that that is going to impact a lot the delivery time and the delivery costs uh, uh, overall in the market. So uh, we in all the deliveries that we have right now uh, I will say that 40% of the space that we have to improve doesn't need to be, that is not related to the, to the robot. It's related to operations and to that transition between the restaurants and the kitchens and loading the robot. And one of the things that excites me, what, like the thing that excites me about the partnership with, with, with companies like Piestro and, the, and Piestro specifically, is that we can speed up those transitions. We can know exactly how long it's going to take that preparation of, of, of the pizza and like the, the transition between the kitchen and the robots or any or any delivery vehicle, it will be faster. So I, I just wanted to do that comment and also to connect it to, 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 to Genesis AI is that since we have had more demand on, uh, on, on our pipeline, we have had to, we have new requirements from our customers in our AI developments and in our robotics. And having a, a, a marketplace in the future that we can access and that is available for everyone, it's, it's paramount. It's paramount. So 
Uh, yeah, very happy. So now we can jump into the questions, uh, but I just wanted to do that comment uh, on, on what you said, uh, Massimo. Uh, so th there is one question that I want to, to answer uh, that is, I'm going to read it. Are cities open to a scenario where there will be too many of these robots on these sidewalks? Are there any limits? Are you seeing any pushback in terms of how safe these devices are? And when it comes to kid pets, uh, can the device safely navigate all these scenarios? Okay, so I'm going to give you uh, uh, some numbers. Uh, currently, there is an estimate of 3 million on-demand couriers in the US. So there are 3 million people doing deliveries uh, like every day. Scooters, we, well, we like uh, the companies, Buried Lime, all these companies, they put around 700,000 scooters in the streets within two years. Yes, they put 700,000 scooters within two years. What we are doing different, the, different that, the difference that we have is that we are integrated, we're integrating the cities in the conversation. All the deployments that we're doing, the city of San Jose, the city of LA, they are integrated to our API. They can actually, like we can exchange data about which places are safer or more difficult. We can control the density of our robots on, on the streets. So it's going like people are not going to notice that the robots are there because we can control it specifically where they should be, how many should be in some areas. And that's why it's very important to have the integration in the cities. So far, we haven't received a, like a, a pushback. Actually, cities love that we have this approach of partnering with them, exchanging data. We are exchanging data about like uh, wheelchair accessibility. If we have recognized which streets are actually, if, the, if a crossing a street is dangerous for a robot, it's also dangerous for a human. Uh, also the streets, are like the cities are like letting us know before we launch, like, hey, we have a lot of accidents reports in these streets. So like be extra careful when you're crossing in your robots with this, in this traffic, in these traffic intersections. So working with cities is super important. Related to a uh, safety to um, people and kids, and our robots are going to go around 70% of a full speed scooter. Yes. Uh, we have uh, this number could have changed this year, but I guess until last year, there are like 25 people that have died from scooters. Yes, like overall. Out of those 25 people were in collisions with cars. Yes, it wasn't, it was, it's like, it's very unlikely that you're going to have a big accident with a scooter, like touching a, 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 like a human or something like that. So far, we haven't had any incident that put on risk or someone after 120,000 orders, we haven't had any incident with a person that had to go to the hospital or anything related to like, we haven't had nothing related to that. And also we are like our, our product is more, we're building like a, a smarter pedestrian. Yes. So the, the, um, yeah, the robots are going to be like, we, we, our goal is that are they're going to be better than a normal pedestrian. And that's why we believe that it's safe. Uh, so that's it. That's my first question. Uh, maybe Archil, you can, there are a lot of questions for you. So you can oh, choose one. For sure, for sure. Thank you, Felipe. And uh, yeah, so I, I, will, I, I guess I will pick the questions that I get a lot, uh, which is, which I guess there are two questions and I'll sort of answer them in short. But first question is, uh, you know, lots of companies, data they have are so sensitive, right? So the question is, uh, how can we entrust people that the sensitive data will not be leaked or will not be uh, sold to someone else and so on, right? So, and this is a very, very tough problem in not only in AI space, but in every industry. But uh, we have a very, very unique and different approach that we will be we'll be spending lots of time building on. We call it uh, that when you are a buyer and you want to sort of uh, provide your data to seller on our platform, I, we would want to build the technologies that will allow you to select from zero to 10, how strongly encrypted you would like your data to be. For example, there is this technology called homophobic encryption, which you can have a data 
completely encrypted, but it also is costly to do computations on the data. So there is a trade-off between privacy and cost of computation. So if you are, let's say, in healthcare sector and your data is extremely sensitive, then you might be willing to pay more money for encryption, right? So, but if you are in another data where you are, for example, just uh, you know uploading Twitter um, hashtags and other type of data, lots of them are public, then you might not want to use any type of encryption. And this unique technology can really be game changer as uh, we can offer different companies based on how sensitive their data is, opportunity to join the marketplace of future. And second question that I'll answer real short is about, you know, AI and robotics are disrupting everything and, uh, uh, and uh, this will also cause some job losses. And I, what I will say here is analogy here is around 100 years ago, right? A little bit more than that. When cars started to come in, people who were riding horses and carts, they lost jobs, right? But car manufacturing and car factories employed a lot more people than people who lost jobs riding carts. So AI and robotics, yes, it sort of creates environment where some jobs become automated, but it actually creates more job opportunities. Or another example here is 10 years ago, there was no such thing as YouTube influencer, you know, but now lots of people make money by being influencers on YouTube, right? So I think the net change is good and net change is positive. Thanks, Arsho. <clears throat> So I'm gonna try and, um, and put together a number of, uh, of this uh, quick shot questions. Uh, so my, uh, my answer to a few of you will be a little bit mixed up, but um, we are still in testing of some of our machines because of the partnerships that we have made with uh, not just KiwiBot, but other brands. Uh, we have kicked up the machine a notch from where it was at the beginning of this pandemic. So we are in testing of the machine. This, the new machine will be uh, on the market in 2021. I cannot tell you exactly when because there's a lot of things that we are working on, um, not necessarily in the not necessarily in the software, more on the hardware. Uh, we have this beautiful bot that is gonna show up right in front of uh, the Piestro machine. So as you might understand, we have to create this beautiful environment for KiwiBot to arrive and collect the pizza uh, safely without a contact and take it out to your home. And so there's a few things that we're tweaking, a few things where we work, that we're working on in collaboration with uh, Felipe's team as well. Um, so the machines are now in test in office spaces where there's a lot of employees so they can actually, I don't know if I can say this on, a, on, um, on this channel, but we are really beating the crap out of this machine because we want to make sure that there are absolutely no mistakes. Uh, there is no room for mistakes. Um, and, and also there is still a lot of work that we're doing with the different brands uh, in recreating their recipes. So tremendous amount of work that goes into the culinary side of this machine, because to me, it's not an option to have a pizza that comes out that is just a decent pizza or no okay pizza because people might love the fact that it's a fresh product and it looks cool and it comes out of a robotic machine. But unless the pizza is outstanding, just like the pizza that I told you that I was eating with my mom, um, we're not gonna go anywhere. So I guarantee you that this pizza is going to be absolutely delicious. Uh, we have plans for a number of countries uh, already. Uh, clearly, we're based in, in California. United States is it's, it's where we're going to start. But I want to say that uh, North America, between, you know, between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, we already have had tremendous contacts 
uh, we've had contacts in, you know, Philippines and and UAE, um, but you know, nothing is is set in stone. Uh, we're happy to talk to both uh, parties that are interested in a partnership or or in investing in the company. We have raised uh, almost $1.1 million in a very quick, less than 90 days crowdfunding. And we just launched a new crowdfunding. Um, actually, we're taking reservations for it right now, but uh, it will go live in the next week or so when all the regulations are in place. Um, I know I have a couple of private messages here, so I will respond to that privately. But yes, of course, uh, of course, we're going to be in New York. Absolutely. One of my favorite cities. I can't, actually can't wait to go to New York with these two gentlemen right here. I heard that they know everybody there. Felipe, do you want to take another question here? We have another 10 minutes. Yeah, definitely. And also, like, I would like to maybe maybe we can reserve the last five minutes to yeah, like closing remarks and, and also to invite everyone to, because I know that all of us have open campaigns and maybe talk a little bit more about the campaign. So I received uh, here related to the uh, question related to our business development uh, cycle. Yeah, so I wanted like, how is it going? <laughs> so the one of the interesting parts is that first of all, yeah, we have a product that works now, like it works. It works and we have already, it's beyond the concept, but it, it works. Yeah. Second, uh, the product is ready. Now we have a product that is ready to print, that it has very, like very attractive unit economics, that is already in short distance orders. And right now we are testing long distance orders, but already and in short uh, and medium distance orders, it's more efficient, ergo cheaper than a human. Yes. Yeah, when uh, when uh, when our shield exposed like the, related to the questions of jobs, for example, one of the, my positions related to 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 food delivery is that here in the U.S. and maybe exception in New York, but here in like the whole U.S., ninety percent of the deliveries are made by people in cars that are powered by gas. Yeah, so we have three thousand pounds machines with a human brain, a, an incredible human body to transport a burrito. That's not, uh, that's not sustainable. That's not sustainable. We should not from a cost perspective, from a, a global warming perspective, and also for uh, like what a human should be doing. I think that it's, it's beyond that. So yeah, but getting back to the question, the business development cycle, it's going very good. Yeah, we have a, like right now we are doing the normal phases that like all of these companies are very big. So we need to do phases of integrations, yeah, due diligence related to data privacy and making sure that everything works. Yeah, taking into account that we started our B2B solution seven months ago and that we already have life yeah, for yeah, partners, it's, it's incredible. Uh, so I feel very good about it. Uh, so now, Archul, if you want to take another one very short so that we can have the five minutes at the end. Oh, for, for sure. Yeah, I will, I will answer, I guess, uh, short. And I will, I will answer one of the sort of uh, most commonly asked the questions, uh, which is uh, when and how uh, sort of world is expecting to go from narrow AI to potentially to more of a general AI. And I'll talk about the problems there. So if you look at, for example, uh, you know, AIs that can beat uh, chess champion in chess, that cannot easily beat a poker champion in poker, you know? So that's why I'm saying it's a narrow. It can usually do only one thing for you, for which it was trained for. It's not adaptable. And that's the biggest, biggest barrier and problem in AI space. And what we want to do is to go from this narrow, not adaptable AI to more general adaptable AI, right? For example, self-driving car technologies that will work not only on for, for not only on a normal car, but also on, let's say, motorbike or, 
on any other type of means of transportation, right? Or potentially even on the, on the bus and so on, right? So like become more adaptable. And we believe that the best way to build more of this general AI is to uh, gather expert AI products and connect them. So instead of inventing this humanoid crazy brains that will you know, like automatically do lots of things at the same time, create an ecosystem where different expert AI tools will work together to do pretty much anything that's imaginable to be done. Uh, and I guess Massimo, maybe you can take the last question and then we can go to summaries. Yes, I'm gonna take a very quick one here from BJ. Uh, what kind of monitoring is built into Biester machine? Um, so we have a constant remote monitoring for each one of the components in this machine. It could be the pizza oven, it could be the refrigeration, it could be any type of, uh, of components. As I said, <clears throat> imagine a refrigerator, you know, the refrigerator that maintains the dough and that maintains the, the, the fresh ingredients has to make sure that it works constantly. Um, you know, a refrigerator doesn't usually just die. A refrigerator acts up a little bit, just like a little child. Uh, it might take a little bit longer uh, to re, you know, um, to restart. Uh, and that could be just as simple as a problem as the filter has not been cleaned. So we're able to monitor the difference in temperature and the timing um, of the refrigerator, the compressor being on or off. And so we can actually intervene and we send out service before there's a problem with the machine. So yeah, constant uh, remote monitoring for all of the, um, of the components. Uh, having said that, since I'm speaking, I'm gonna go through very quickly. If you guys want to, um, if you guys want to find out more about uh, Paestro and how to invest, all you have to do is go to www.paestro.com. There you can see what our approach to market is and you can find out how to invest. Um, very simple. Uh, just go there and you will have all the information you might need. Thank you, Massimo, and I will do a quick uh, quick summary as well. So uh, we, we already raised around 1.2 million and I would like to uh, thank everyone, uh, investors, community members, uh, area attendees, it was absolutely, I also thank Felipe and Massimo, absolutely great and fabulous conversation. And I believe that uh, together we can uh, defeat, to, to, together we can uh, contribute to the humanity together, we can create this environment where not only big companies can use AI products and services, we would like to go against this big tech oligopolies that have full control of means of automation. And we want more participants. So we love to get more participants. We love to get more people join us. We are raising our net capital. I just posted the link. And again, one more time, I'll just thank everyone for attending. Well, yeah, same. Thank you very much, Massimo and Archil for the time. Very interesting. And also to do a, a, a quick recap of our equity crowdfunding round. And, um, we started the equity crowdfunding round in August. And so far we have uh, raised over five, uh, $576,000 from 647 investors. So our average investment, it's, it's like a, it's, a, it's around $1,000. So I feel very happy to have everyone involved. A lot of these investments are from students that use the product in UC Berkeley and also from people in Colombia that have follow us. So very happy to, to, to have them on board of this, of this project. As a closing remark, the robots are going to happen. Robots are going to be the norm. It's, it's something that is going to happen yes or yes. The food delivery market, it's a, food delivery, it's a market that is growing so fast. I was just reading a report this morning that in China, they are already delivering around 85 million orders per day in an addressable market of, of just like 300 million people. That is almost the same amount of people in the US, just in the, like in the, in the, in the main cities. So it's insane how many orders and this is going to happen 
also in the US, the holy grail or what is blocking that same growth that is happening in China, that is not happening in the US at the same level is cost and efficiency of our of our logistic system. So this company, is this, this sector is not going to be a zero sum game. There are other bets. Uh, all the bets that are happening, all the companies that are burning on this, like if any team wants to do that bet, uh, we are already two, three years ahead and they will need to raise at least $20 million to compete with us. So it's not, a, it's not, an, easy, it's not an easy bet. The, the, the valuation that we have in the, in the, in the campaign, it's, a, it's very undervalued in my, in my opinion, taking into account what all the things that are happening right now. The campaign is going to, is going to be open until January 7th. Uh, then it's, uh, and so it's going to be the last chance uh, until a uh, potential IPO. So it's going to be the last chance for the public for, to invest in KiwiBot. Uh, our investors, one of our, our main investors is the University of Berkeley and they have like, a, they're like 50% of the cars are going to be back to the university. So all the investors I have been following very carefully who are investing in the company and happy to have more normal people involved in this solution. And thank you very much everyone to, for attending today. Uh, I also shared the link of uh, an investment page so that you can read more. And we're going to follow up to all the people that are registered with our contact information so that you, we can, you, you can contact or giving us questions uh, privately uh, in the future. Thank you very much for, for everyone to attend. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And thanks, Arshul. Thanks, Felipe. It's a blast. Uh, I can't wait to see you guys very soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.